Man was separated from the life of God and therefore from the light of God. No wonder God says their understanding were darkened. This was a nation that was such a, a nation of industries. A nation that was known for its invention. If you saw anything that said made in Great Britain, you better take it. I would say their understanding became darkened. It is a process. Because in him was life. And that life was the light of men. The illumination of men. The development of men. Well, I began a series titled Destroying the Works of the Devil. I said I woke up that morning with a thought in my heart. Destroying the works of the devil. Those words were ringing in my spirit. Destroying the works of the devil. And our text was and still is 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. I woke up that day with a determination in my heart to make sure wherever I see the works of the devil, I must destroy in my life, in my body, wherever, that is my attitude. Wherever I see the works of the devil, I must destroy. Because for this purpose, can someone say for this purpose? For this reason, for this cause, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus did not have the attitude of tolerating the works of the devil. And by the end of this message, we are not only going to see what he has already done, we are going to see the kind of attitude that we must have, the kind of disposition, inclination that we must have towards the works of the devil. The Bible says war broke out in heaven, the dragon fought, the angels of God fought, and they kicked the devil and his cohorts out of heaven. And there was no place found for them. No wonder the Bible says, give no place to the devil. You know, I remember some time ago, and I think we've shared it before, there was this man of God and his wife, they were always having problems, and their home was about to break up and all of that. And his mother said to him, since the devil was kicked out of heaven, he's been homeless. Don't let him find a home in your marriage. That woman was not literate. But you know, some of these people who didn't really read or can't read, I think they have more sense than some of us. More spiritual sense, more emotional sense. Because I want you to remember that when Abraham was called by God, there was no Bible. How did he know that God was calling him? I want you to know that God is bigger than your knowledge of him. God is bigger even, doesn't the Bible say that if all the works of Jesus were to be written in the Bible, there would be no book big enough to contain? The Bible says the Bible was written as holy men were moved by the Spirit of God. I want you to know that before those things were written, there was a God and there's still a God. The Word of God is there for us to cross-check to make sure that, yes, we are in line. But I want us to understand that there was that God that Abraham knew. That said to him, leave your father and your mother. Leave your father's house, leave everything. And come to a place that I will show you. He said, in blessing, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. You are going to be a blessing. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I wonder how those people knew it was God speaking to them. I know that you can know when God speaks to you. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. The voice of a stranger, they will not follow. Don't let anyone confuse you. Don't let anyone mislead you. Because there's a knower on your inside. The Bible says eternity is written in the hearts of men. So this woman advised his son, her son and said, Since the devil was kicked out, he's been homeless. Don't let him make a home in your marriage. And I want to say to you that the Bible says there was no place found for the devil, the dragon, and all his angels in heaven. And the same Bible says give no place to him. Give no room. Don't give him any room. Let him wander in the arid places. And when people are ready to build in those arid places, they check him out again. That is the truth. You keep keeping him out, 
until it gets into the bottomless pit. Is someone listening to me? So for this purpose, I mean, I woke up with those words ringing in my spirit. For this cause, for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. The Amplified Bible says the reason the Son of God was made manifest, visible, was to undo. That's the same meaning of the word destroy. The word destroy there is luo in Greek. It means to loosen. It means to undo. It means to dissolve. You know why I like such things? It's not just because I want to sound like I know the Greek. It helps me. Amen. When you, because each, at different times, the, each meaning has relevance. To undo the works of the devil. When you need to undo what Satan has done. Amen. Then there's one that means to untie. Hallelujah. When you meet a station that needs to be untied. To loosen. To dissolve. Hallelujah. You know sometimes you are praying for the sick. And you are believing that that thing be dissolved. Praise God. So you want to make sure. You, know, you want to understand these things. So that you can know the application. So you don't just walk away oh, to destroy the works of the devil. And then you just go away. You don't even meditate in what it means. What that word destroy, what does it mean? To destroy the works of the devil, to undo, to, to loosen, to dissolve. Because when you see people who are in bondage, you need to, to, to loosen something. Is that okay? Today... I'm doing the part two of that message, destroying the works of the devil, bearing our text in mind. But today I want to focus on something I've subtitled, bruising the head of the serpent. After the fall of man, God said, to, God said in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 to the serpent, and I will put enmity between you and the woman. And between your seed and her seed, he, can someone say he? He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. In Revelation chapter 20 verse 2, the Bible tells us clearly who the serpent is. It says the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan. Is that Okay. So the Bible tells us in Revelation 20 verse 2 who the serpent is. So some of you might be wondering, the Bible talks about serpent, why are we talking about the devil? The Bible says the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan. God said the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Take note of this, he shall bruise your head. He, capital H. That means that seed is a he, not a them, in that sense. Referring to one person, God was talking about Christ. We all know why he wasn't called the seed of the man in that place, because Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. You know the story in Luke chapter 1? I'm deliberately referring to this because we might have new people in church or whatever. But Luke chapter 1, you can write it down. When you get home, you read from verse 31 to verse 38. But in verses 34 and 35, then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I do not know a man? That's why Jesus wasn't called the seed of the man. How can this be once, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered, verse 35, and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. That was God's master plan. Jesus is called the second or the last Adam. Now we understand who the seed of the woman is. Do we now understand who the seed of the woman is? He says, God said, he, not they, he shall bruise your head. So he was talking about a he, somebody. He shall bruise your head. I checked the word head. The word head there is a Hebrew word rosh, which means head. The head of a, the head, maybe of the human body. The head of a lion. What is the principle? And when you say head, head is not always referring to the physical head. You know that. 
When they say the man is the head of his wife, I'm sure you know that the woman still has a head. A physical head, you know that. She's got a physical head that's got brains and all of that. So when they say the man is the head of the woman. So when you talk about head, head is not just the physical head. It also means the head of a line. What is the principle or supreme? It means first. It means top. It means prince. It means the highest parts, the summit, the beginning. It means foremost. It means chief. It also means headship. God said, the seed of the woman will bruise your headship. Will bruise the head of the serpent, of Satan, of the devil. Jesus bruised the headship of Satan on the cross. Where did he do it? On the cross. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise, someone say likewise, likewise shared this in the same. That is, he fully identified with our humanity. He himself shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had, past tense, who had the power of death, that is the devil. Verse 15, and to release and release those who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. I want us to take note of the word power there. Satan once had the power of death, but he no longer has the power of death because Jesus through, through death destroyed him. He bruised his head, his headship. Are you listening to me? Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 says, Jesus having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it, in his cross. That was where Jesus bruised the head of Satan. Jesus through death destroyed him who had the power of death, that is the devil. What gave the devil the power of death? If he had the power of death, what gave him this power of death? In Romans 5, the Bible tells us what gave him the power of death. Can someone tell me? Sin. In Romans chapter 5, verse 12, the Bible says, Therefore, just as through one man, that is Adam, sin entered the world and death through sin. The Bible says, Him who had the power of death. What gave Satan the power of death? The answer is sin. Through one man, that is Adam, the first Adam, sin entered the world. What sin? When God said, the day you eat of this tree, you will die. Sin entered the world and death through sin. And thus death spread to all men. To how many men? Because all sinned. Last, when I did the first part, I explained to us what death means. And we're going to go to it later on, but I want to move on. Verse 14 of the same Romans 5. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who is to come. Now listen to this. Adam means mankind. It means humanity, the human race, not just the male man. Adam was the representative of the whole human race. So when Adam sinned, we all sinned. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Through Adam, sin entered into the world and death through sin. Death spread to how many men? All men, with no exception, because all sinned that is in Adam. Now let me say this to you. What this means, you know, the Bible tells us that not only, can you imagine, let me read verse 14 again, Romans 5. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam. Who is a type of him who is to come? What does this mean? When we say, for instance, death, which, you know, I explained to us, death does not only mean cessation of life. Death means what? Decay deterioration, corruption. When you look at death, you can see it's under three major headings. 
sicknesses and diseases. Is that okay? You see poverty and all of that. So when, we, when the Bible talks about death, it culminates in physical death. But it doesn't start with physical death. Are you listening? So the Bible is saying here that not even only to those, that death did not spread only to those who sinned according to the sin of Adam. So when we say for instance sickness is the cause of sin, we're not trying to say because you sinned. Do you understand now? The Bible says through one man's disobedience, sin, one man's sin, death came in. Is that not true? So death spread unto all. So when we say that sickness is a result of sin, disease is a result of sin, we are not saying of your own sin particularly. Is that okay? Because it was through sin that death came in and death spread to all. What we're saying is that when God created man in the Garden of Eden before the fall, there was no sickness, there was no disease. Is that okay? Because some of us feel, well, I didn't do anything. No, 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 no. It's not about you, you, been, you, you haven't done anything. We're saying that the root cause of what we see on the earth today is the fall of man. Through one man, sin entered into the world and death through sin. And death spread to all. Even to those who have not sinned, who did not sin after the similitude of Adam's sin. Is that okay? It's not because you ate anything, because Adam means humanity. Adam means mankind. That's why the Bible calls him the first Adam. And that's why when Jesus came, he also represented and represents the human race. So when God looks down from heaven, he sees two Adams. That's why Paul always says things like through Christ, in Christ, in him, in him, through him, by him. So it's either you are still in the first Adam or you are in the second Adam. Are you listening to what, what, what we're saying this morning? Let me read something else to you that will help you. Because, you know, if we don't understand what the Bible is saying, we will not know how to rise up and deal with situations in our lives. That death did not only spread. That was why you could have people. When they brought this man who was born blind and they said, who sinned? You know, when you see unfortunate children born with no limbs, born, you know, deformed, what caused it? Not necessarily the sin of the parents, but the sin that came into the earth through one man's disobedience. Is that okay? And death spread to all. By the end of this study, we will know how to make sure we deal with the things in our lives. The effect of these things in our lives. Because God made a provision. Can somebody say amen? amen. God made what? A provision. He didn't leave us helpless. But whenever you see sicknesses and diseases around, they're not talking about the sin you just committed or the sin your parents committed. I know of good Christians, I tell you, who, have, who gave birth to children that have deformed heart or what situation or the other. So they are not talking about your immediate sin. Is somebody listening to me? Oh, they're not saying that, okay, the reason why you don't have a baby is because you did something. It's not what you did. It's not what you did. It was what Adam did. How many of us know that when God created us, we were not meant to die at all? Well, you can start asking yourself, so where will all of us be? Leave that to God. You can say, well, thank God people die because if people don't die, the world would have been overpopulated by now. That's what happens when you get your brain involved. God did not create us to die. Are you listening to me? He said, the day you eat it, you're going to die. And from that day, man began to die. Let me just quickly read something to us. Because I was saying it's not about the sin that you committed. Is that okay? But the sin that Adam committed. Are you tracking with me? Romans chapter 5. The Bible now tells us, where is that place that says, okay, nevertheless, death reigned. It now says in verse... 15, but the free gift is not like the offense. 
For if by one man's offense many died, much more by the grace of God and the gift of the by by the gift and the gift by the grace of the one man Jesus Christ abounded to many. Verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So by one man, you know, by one man's sin, and then by one man's righteousness. Is that okay? But we're going somewhere. Through Adam, sin entered into the world and death through sin. Death spread to all men with no exception because all sinned in Adam. In Genesis 3, 17, God said, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day, in the day, not the next day. Can someone say God says what he means? And he means what he says. Can someone say God is not man that he should lie? Amen. God said to Adam, for in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. My marginal note says, dying you shall die. <laughs> dying you shall die. That depicts a process. Dying, you shall die. They didn't fall down physically dead immediately, but the process of death began immediately. Is that not true? That death was first and foremost a spiritual death. That's why when you and I get born again, what gets born again first? Your spirit man. Your spirit man comes alive unto God. You come alive on your inside. If your hair was short before, it would still be short. If you were dark, you would still be dark. If you were black, you would still be black and proud. Black and humble. Whatever you were physically, if you were dirty in your mind, you would still be dirty. Because your spirit man comes alive. And God now says, you take responsibility by you renewing your mind. You take responsibility by you presenting your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. If you were living an unholy, an unholy life before, you will still be living an unholy life if you don't do anything about it. But what happens is that your spirit comes alive. That's why those, in those old SU days, they used to sing. What I used to do, I do them no more. What they're trying to say is that the old desires, there's no desire in their spirit for certain things they used to do before. What they used to do and used to feel cool about, they now don't feel cool about it. That's why the Bible says in 1 John, it says that anyone that, that is born again does not sin. Why? The seed of God is in him. Because that seed of God comes into your spirit. You don't enjoy killing people. That's why you repent when you sin. Is that not true? You repent when you talk ugly about somebody. Is that not true? But guess what? Thank you that you didn't say it's true. I like your honesty. But you know what happens? As you continue to neglect the voice of your conscience, then your conscience gets seared as with a hot iron. So a Christian can gossip, backbite, speak evil without feeling bad anymore. But you will testify that when you genuinely got born again, your spirit came alive unto God. I remember there was a time like that. I was writing everybody under the sun, apologizing even for things I didn't do. I mean, everything in me just wanted to, you know, just, you know, make peace with everybody. You were not arguing with anybody. You were not trying to prove any point with anybody. You, you know, you understand what it means that when they slap you on one cheek, you turn the other. I mean, I tell you, you were not even arguing. But as you got wiser. You know, like little children when they're born. They're so simple, they're so innocent until things begin to happen. Until when, you know some children, they make them grow up so fast. Especially what children from broken homes. When they are with mom, mom says this to them. When they are with dad, dad says this to them. They want to play to the gallery. When they come to dad's place, they want to tell dad what's happening in mom's place. When they go to mom's place, God help you what they are telling mom, what do you do? And then they are trying to hit two heads together. Well, they are growing up learning some things. Survival instinct, 
They are learning a lot of things, how to survive, how to whatever. They know what dad likes to hear. They know what mom likes to hear. You know, they begin to take on such wisdom, quote and unquote, which is definitely not from above. What am I saying? When you got saved, your spirit man came alive unto God. You loved God. You loved the brethren. You loved everybody. You were hugging everybody. You were embracing everybody until they began, they began to hurt you. Then you now learn better. I won't talk to that one again. I won't even, I won't even, okay, I won't give them a birthday gift. But before, you were giving everything to everybody. Ha, ah, you know. Now you're learning, learning, learning. And you say, I've learned. Who taught you? Where did you learn it from? But what I'm saying is this. When they took off that tree, they died in their spirit. But a process began. Because God said, dying, you shall what? Die. That death was first and foremost a spiritual death that set into motion a gradual process of deterioration. Have you noticed, let me give you another example. Have you noticed that in relationship, you begin to do stuff. And when you start doing them, you don't see the repercussion immediately. Have you noticed that? People in relationship can understand what I'm saying. It's not the first day you ignore somebody that you see the effect of it. It's not the first day you, you shun somebody. It's not the first day you do things like that that you begin to see the effect of it. But when you carry on doing it, then things begin to disintegrate in your marriage, in your home, in your relationship. Is that okay? It's not the first day you did that thing. But if that thing is not attended to, not dealt with immediately, a seed has gone into the ground, the effect of disintegration has started, but it's not obvious to the eye. In dying, you shall die. It's a gradual process of what? Deterioration, decay, corruption. From the moment you bring the food out of the fridge and you leave it out there. If it's in winter, it takes time. But let me tell you, from the moment you brought it out of the freezer, the process of decay started. The food is not yet bad, but the process started. How many people are still going around today, but the process of decay has set in? All those things you expose yourselves to, all the pornography, you're doing that, but you are still loving your wife. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I love my wife, I love my wife. You keep doing that. You don't see the effect of what you're doing immediately. Okay? You talk down on one another. You don't see the effect immediately. But something is happening. And then when we see the effect, we begin to run up and down. I told the youth yesterday, accidents don't happen. We make them. If you didn't make them, somebody else made them. We make them. Through our carelessness, our neglect, ignoring things, we make them. Some of us are groaning like Romans chapter 8 says. We're groaning. We're groaning to be released from this bondage of corruption. Corruption there means decay, deterioration. From this wheelchair, groaning to be released from this diabetes. Groaning to be released from this hypertension. Groaning to be released. But how much groaning is going on on the inside of you? He said to release those who are appointed to death.